just talk about Good morning, Fan Expo Canada. How's it going? My name is Moises. I'm going to be your host this morning. I'm around uh, a few other panels today. Uh, you're not here to see me. You're here to see Cast to Save by the Bell, right? Good, good. I showed up to the right room. We've got something to watch, but before we throw it to that, I wanted to note that this is the 25th anniversary of this convention. Uh, Chrissy came out earlier and asked, how many of you have actually been coming all 25 years? Let's see some hands. That's amazing. That's a quarter century that you've been coming to this amazing celebration of pop culture and everything. Uh, how many of you, this is your first fan expo? Okay, welcome. Uh, you saw all those hands, all you veterans. Make some friends, make them feel welcome. Make sure that they come back for year 26. Uh, we've got something to watch, but uh, I, I want to make sure that, that once we're done with that, when we're ready to welcome the talent out onto the stage, that you are ready to blow the roof off this place for these wonderful people. Are you ready, Toronto? All right. All right, kick it up all the notches. Let's see what we got to watch and get them out. Let's bring them out to the stage. Elizabeth Berkeley, Mario Lopez, and Mark Paul Gosselar. Welcome to Toronto, folks. Hey, Hi. Yeah. Great to be here. Hello, Hello everyone. Now, we'll be uh, taking audience questions. We're going to make sure that most of the time is for you, the audience. Uh, there's an X on the ground right over here that you can start lining up at. Uh, to start off with, a lot of people in this audience were young people growing up watching Saved by the Bell, looking up to the three of you as their idols, as people that, uh, that they looked up to. Who did you look up to as you were growing up making the show? Did you have, whether it was celebrity idols, people in your life that, that meant a lot to you that you looked up to? Who, who did you guys consider your heroes? Well, pretty deep question to start off right off the bat. But, uh, deep thoughts I mean, 11 a.m. I, I like it. I mean, I was just a fan of television in, in general, so I was consuming everything. I just, I just love TV. So I remember growing up, there was uh, a lot of Three's Company, the Jeffersons, different strokes, that sort of stuff, I think. Uh, the Brady Bunch was on. Yeah, Facts of Life, all that. So I was, that was, it, it was an era of just great sitcoms, great theme songs, family ties, yeah. So those are about probably the, what was in the wheelhouse. How about uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Oh, that's movies now. Now you're no, going movies. Saying, yeah, yes, yes, everything. of course. Of that was the thing when, when I got the script for Saved by the Bell and I, I saw that Zach was talking to the camera. I was like, oh my God, I get to play Ferris Bueller. And I was such a fan of Ferris Bueller that awesome I was like, flick. I love that movie. And to play a show that kind of had an element of Ferris Bueller's Day Off was pretty cool for me. What about you, Elizabeth? Who'd you look up to? Um, I was obsessed, like like a ridiculous obsession with Flashdance. Like I, w I was, I I grew up in Michigan. I have a lot of family in Toronto, and in my basement, this was right before I moved to to Hollywood to do Save by the Bell. I had a little dance studio in there, nothing fancy, just very plain. But that was the anthem of my childhood, basically. That movie. Footloose. Aren't you, aren't you buddies with Jennifer she Beals? She happens to be my best girlfriend and maid of honor in my wedding. Oh, look so at that. life is funny, right? Manifested that. <laughs> I did manifest. Yeah. I'm sure the fans have, have a lot of Saved by the Bell questions. I have one for you, and that is about hair. This is a show that had some iconic hair looks. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, you know, it, it, it is a question that I, I don't think I, I've heard you guys asked a whole, whole lot, but what was the, the hair maintenance routine like on this show? Because you guys came out we perfectly each, coiffed. We each had our own. Well, it seems like... Mark Paul and I had a lot. Had more. <laughs> I had a lot. Uh, hair maintenance than the girls, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I, I did. Mine was just I'll, going I'll through products like Shaper hairspray by the caseload. Yeah. I, no, mine. I'd have to get dyed every two weeks. I'd have to go and sit in a chair. And usually it was like on set. Like we'd have the the makeup play. You guys would be like walking by, and I'd have the foil in my hair. Or the other method is like a cap where they pull like With little. The knitting needle. The, yeah, the knitting needle. Yeah. But they pull like little uh, cool. strands of hair and then they put dye on it. I liked it because sometimes it was a lot blonde. Sometimes you were like Billy Idol and then yep. sometimes you were like yep. no more Ricky But it Schroeder. changed also because on, on hiatuses, and I, I think we, we've, we all feel this way, but every hiatus, so we do 22 episodes and then a hiatus, you know, we take a break. Every hiatus we thought our show was canceled. And so we'd go back to school. We'd go back to our say own our goodbyes. Lives. We'd say our goodbyes. And Cry. like... I would be into Vanilla Ice or whoever at the time was like 
You know, hair was like that. My, kind my, my of, yeah. hair was like it. Remember, I shaved the sides <laughs> of my hair, and so in you know season four of Saved by the Bell, my hair is very close to uh, uh, what is his name, Robert Van Winkle. Robert Van Winkle. Robert Van dope. Winkle. That was dope back um, then. But yeah, Vanilla Ice. So I had that, and then one year it was like you know like a leopard speckled looking thing, and that was based on what was kind of currently happening in the nineties. Yeah. And I sometimes had to dye it darker. God forbid Jesse be blonde at all. So I just did a rinse. You guys didn't know about that. No, I didn't, didn't okay. know. Well, can Secrets we talk about revealed. Mario's hair? Because Mario's hair, I mean, that wasn't natural. I, I, I mean, I, I, your, nobody your, has that type Your hair of was a whole production in and of itself. My hair was its own Where did character. you go to get that done? Because you never let us know. <laughs> like, really? Did you ever know that? Like, I never questioned it. I knew about yours. It was sometimes home, sometimes studio, yes, right? Yes, right. Mario but was, I like, didn't know. secretive. It was like, I, I think you had, like, a, a secret crew that came in. and It was, it was a top-level clearance, I, I like, CIA level. thing. No, no. Yeah, no, my hair was actually not curly. Believe it or not, I used to get a perm. <laughs> That's, is that crazy? Why are you laughing, fool? <laughs> but here's the thing about everybody always likes to point out the mullet, but the crazy thing is, is I didn't even know it was a mullet back in the day. I really didn't. I thought it was, well, it was you know, it was funny because in that era, um, a lot of people uh, like Mel Gibson or Steven Seagal, who was, I was just kicking it with, <laughs> had like longer hair. And I just kind of wanted to be able to kind of pull it back. And yeah. cause those are the guys when I was a kid growing up. Right. And I thought it looked cool. I didn't know it was a mullet. Now everybody says the mullet. So, okay, I guess I rocked a Jerry curl mullet. <laughs> I still don't know where he got it done though. That, I don't think oh, we'll no. ever know. Oh, it was, either my, it, it was either my mom. Really? Yeah. My no. mom. Yeah. Elvia permed it herself. My mom got yeah, trust, down with her hair. Trust and your mom with your secrets. My mom or, um, my mom's friend Elsa. That was it. No sometimes it'd be really tight, and then sometimes it was like a little more relaxed. Like right? <laughs> right? I'm not. I'm not lying. It would be like growing out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many of us. Uh, <laughs> you, so you got to understand though, as well. Like I, for for me, I, I can only speak for myself, but it was super awkward period of my life. Right? It was like 15 years old. You're going through hormones. You know, you're and, and all of it is sort of on film. Like all these awkward moments you guys enjoyed, but for us it was like, oh my God, this is my teen years, and just going through it was was not as easy as. It we was all sometimes. know those years are not the easiest, right? No, but, but imagine you look, if you. No, they, but you yeah, look good, dude. It wasn't like you were a funny-looking kid or anything. You look, you look good. I was, I'm trying to. I'm just thinking about bringing back the mullet, so don't trip. <laughs> I, I've got one going on right now, so I'm trying to bring it back. Uh, Go ahead and start lining up. If you got questions, you know, I love doing my job, but I also like being lazy. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you a couple things about uh, work that you did after Saved by the Bell. We know you for those, these characters so much, but one of the things that I loved was seeing, seeing all of you pop up in different places. One did of my, you? Uh, di I did. I did indeed. <laughs> one, of my favorite, one of my favorite indie movies of, of the early aughts was Roger Dodger. Uh, what, what was it like going, going into the theater, doing, doing some, some, some really interesting indie stuff? Uh, you were in a production of Hurley Burley with Wallace Shawn, right? Yeah, and Ethan Hawke. And Ethan Hawke. Yeah, what, 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 was, what was doing that work like? Um, well, Hurley Burley was probably my, my favorite creative thing so far. Um, it was, I was replacing someone, and I had two days to learn the entire play, the blocking, and meet the cast and rehearse and go on. So it was a little bit, it was intense, but um, Ethan Hawke played the lead and, and I played his love interest and that was on Broadway for quite a few months. Um, really inspiring, incredible. And terrifying to have two days to learn everything, but luckily like my dance training and, and my background helped me learn because I had to learn her exact moves and do everything but make it my own. So it was kind of crazy. Um, and the independent stuff that I did was another opportunity to just work with incredible artists and do really creative things, and then in roles that maybe someone might not have considered me for before, but it was an opportunity to really take some risks. What was it like trying to break out of being typed a certain way? Uh, you know, was it really an uphill climb? Was it just finding you the mean most receptive from Jesse people? Or? From Jesse. Okay. Um, no, I think, you know, doing Showgirls right after kind of broke it out, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you come out of a volcano with glitter and not much else, you're breaking it out, okay? So after that was an interesting time. That, that's a one-woman show, though. Um, but at, but I, I, after that, had to really fight for um, new opportunities, and I had to overcome a lot, but it 
made me really strong and um, made me very clear on the type of things I would, would do from then, to be honest. Things kind of hyper-focused the vision I had for the type of people I wanted to work with after that. From what I understand, one of the more important things for you personally to do was your Ask Elizabeth column, uh, was, was being there for you know, young women looking for somebody to look up to, looking for you know, somebody to, to give them advice. What, how, did, how did that come about? Um, actually, I think born out of the experience of Showgirls, um, little did I know the work that I had to do on myself to kind of find my self-esteem again after it had kind of been tested at that time. Uh, years later, I, did, I created um, a two-hour interactive workshop that I facilitate in middle schools and high schools. It's now in its 12th year, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of girls now around the world. We have a New York Times bestselling book and I'm about to launch a digital platform for girls, and it's my way of being of service. I come in as a volunteer, and it's incredible. It's not about me, it's about creating, like a, a room like this of ninth through 12th graders at a given school to bring intimacy and connection for them is, is honestly my, my mission. More important now than ever. Uh, now, Mario, I, I loved your performance as Greg Louganis. Uh, I, I, I love that you were in a revival of a chorus line, but if anything, I think I'm a bigger fan than anything of your role as Mario Lopez in various TV shows <laughs> that you've popped up as. What, what is it like playing yourself or a version of yourself in Brooklyn Nine-Nine in uh, however many shows that you've popped up in as yourself? Dang, you did your research yeah. right here, man. <laughs> Look, man, I'm, I'm, a, it, I'm a fan from way back. I'm gonna do this right. It's funny, because we were just talking about it on my radio show that I have a pretty impressive resume of playing Mario Lopez in I mean, so many... Uh, seriously. You're the definitive Mario Lopez of the screen. <laughs> no, I, it, we counted. It was like 12 different shows where I play. I was like, that's a pretty good resume of playing Mario. But it was always like kind of funny versions of myself or different versions. Yeah, and, yeah or heightened or kind of, you know. And uh, there are always shows that I either liked or uh, a buddy was on. Uh, Mark Paul hasn't but asked Nip me on Tuck. his shows yet. <laughs> Did you guys see him on Nip Tuck? Well, that was a whole, that was a whole other, that That's was an, amazing. That wasn't Mario Lopez there. But that was amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dad. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, it's, it's always fun to kind of do those kind of things and, you know, poke fun of yourself or have fun with it. What's it like being on, I guess, my side of the microphone, uh, interviewing people, working with talent on, on camera, working with Access Hollywood? You've got a new show coming called All Access yeah. that people in Canada will actually be able to see. I, yeah. I should mention. That's something that I know is always important to Torontonians. Yes. Uh, well, thank you for that. It's actually going to be three new shows, so hopefully I'll watch. It'll be Access Daily in the morning, and then I'll be at doing Access Hollywood and All Access later at night, so hopefully you don't get Mario Overload on, uh, while watching uh, NBC. But no, I, you know, I love doing it. I did my show Extra for um, 11 years, and I'm a huge fan of TV, film, music, and... I, I genuinely enjoy like meeting these people. Like we were talking, then I saw Steven Zagal, and I made a beeline to him because I was like, "Oh, I was a fan." So I, I love. I, I'm a big fan of entertainment. So um, I feel very blessed and fortunate to be able to to do what I do and talk to all these uh, fascinating people. Do you have a memory that stands out of somebody that that you interviewed that you worked with in that context that you you kind of had to compose yourself? You had trouble keeping it together because you're that big of a fan. <laughs> well, all the time. I hear, I mean, I hear Mark Paul Goslar is. You know, you're kind of the biggest fan of of that guy in the world. Yeah, oh, this dude? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I am a big fan. I am a big fan of him. I think anytime you get to meet people that you grew up really liking, um, and you were a fan of as a kid, the little kid inside you sort of comes out. So the first time that I interviewed Arnold Schwarzenegger or Stallone or Al Pacino and those kind of guys. And then over the years, you, oh, you, you actually become friendly with him. Like I started doing things with Arnold and part of his board and he'll invite me to a party or some or Stallone and I'll start and I'm like, wow. So it's a sort of surreal and I still kind of pinch myself moments. So it's, um, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun uh, perk. Mark Paul, one of the, one of the things that I enjoyed most that you did after Saved by the Bell was when you showed up on NYPD Blue. Yes. Uh, one of the legendary shows that you, as I, as far as I remember, you have the last line of NYPD Blue, one of the great cop procedures of all time. What was it like working with Stephen Bochco, not just on that show, but uh, on, on Commander-in-Chief as well? Um, yeah, it was, it was uh, uh, boy, I, I mean, NYPD Blue, when I, when I got that job, I, I had auditioned for another show of his, um, and I didn't get it. And in the room, he said, 
to me, he goes, you're a really good actor. And I thought, oh, here, here's the send off. You know, it's like, yeah, I didn't get this job and you're gonna be nice to me. And I said, oh, thank you, sir. He goes, I'd like to work with you again. And I said, oh, you know, there's, there's another great thing to say, but you know, we'll see where that goes. And then two weeks later, he called and he said, how would you like to be on NYPD Blue? And at the time, Rick Schroeder, who was another child star, uh, grew up as a, a, a child in the business, was on the show, but I had no idea that he was departing. And he says, Rick is departing. I want you to take over his uh, spot as the second detective alongside Dennis Franz, um, who played Sipowitz. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm a kid from California, born and raised in California. I'm playing a New York detective. I didn't even audition for this role. I have no idea what, what, uh, what it is, what, uh, what it's about. Um, so Did I you have a, an accent? I can't remember. Uh, no, I didn't have an accent that much. I mean, there, there, I had a specific character to play because one of the technical advisors on the show, Bill Clark, was, uh, I was basically playing him. So I could, I could kind of take off of his mannerisms. Uh, and he had a slight New York accent, you know. There's certain words that come out that are subtle. subtle. Um, but that was, that was a big leap in my, you know, Showgirls for, for Elizabeth and for me it was NYPD Blue, which I had to which show I my did. ass too. Yeah. Unfortunately, so yeah. we were both nude on, on <laughs> our next that's, jump. that's what you do. Then. It's what you yeah. do. If you want to break out of a character, you show your ass. <laughs> that's hysterical. Mario. Mario. <laughs> I showed my ass. Nip talk. I, I, I showed Come a lot Come to the more. booth later <laughs> on. Showed a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I have, one, I have one, for you, one more for you, Mark Paul, and then, then we'll turn it over to the audience. Uh, uh, you, you were on two shows recently that, that sadly uh, ended uh, well before their time, Pitch and The Passage. Uh, having been a child actor yourself, did you find yourself doing any sort of mentoring for your young co-stars that were, that were starting out, or were, you know, were they, were they you know, pretty well you know, on their path already? No, I think that the current generation has it a lot tougher than we did because there's a thing called social media now. And I think it's tough for the young actors. They're, they're way more savvy than I think we were. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were just having fun. Like I said, every season we said goodbye to each other because we never knew if we were coming back. I had no idea what the ratings were for our show. We were up against Bugs Bunny. Um, you know, so the, the, the competition wasn't that stiff. But nowadays, I mean, the girl that I worked with, she was 11 when we started and 12 when we finished. Um, and she's very savvy of the business and, and uh, what it meant and what fame means and um, where she wants to go with her career. I think we all had aspirations, yeah. but we kind of just had, you know, we didn't have much to draw from other than what we saw on television and film, where now there's so many platforms for people to see. And also, don't you find that the, the younger ones also, like, right away are thinking of having a production company oh, and creating God. their own opportunities? There's so much more savvy Whereas than we were. we were more at the I was like, I'm an actor. people. You I'm, know? I'm an actor, and now people are, like, they get into the business, they're like, I want to direct, I want to produce, I want to I want to write, I want to be a part of the industry. And we're, I felt like with us, we sort of had to, if you were a TV actor, you stayed in television, and you sometimes broke out into film. Now, you see a lot of very successful TV actors become immediately film actors, yeah. and vice versa, which is great it for, is good. for everyone. Yeah, a lot Not of the same rules anymore. No. Yeah. no. Let's turn it over to you. Hey. He Say took a knee that took so long. Sorry, Say, buddy. Say he was Shazam. Like, he was on a knee. He was like begging. Please, please let me answer my Shazam. question. Shazam. Yeah. Uh, first, I wanted to say thank you so much for making my childhood. I literally woke up every morning early before school just to watch your show. Uh, my question is, with all these reboots and remakes and all that stuff that went on, uh, did you guys ever feel pressure to do something like that besides the Jimmy Fallon thing, which I thought was a really cool way to do it? But did you feel any sort of pressure to do something bigger? I don't know if pressure is the right word, but I think it's flattering that people like yourself or other people would um, like to see something like that or, or would welcome it. Obviously, we couldn't be in high school still. And <laughs> so you'd have to be sort of creative with the premise. But um, Well, hey, here in Canada, they've rebooted Degrassi how many times? Yeah, right. <laughs> Very good. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's fun to think about. Uh, who knows? You never say never, so... There's, talk, there's always talks, so there's still, I, I just heard recently, there's talks, and it's, uh, you know. It has uh, to be right. We know about it, right? All mm -hmm. three of us know about yeah. this, this person that's going to tackle it. We, if something came up, I'm sure all of us would, would want to be on board in some capacity, so there's that. But nothing has ever really come to us with legs that would make us um, kind of, you know, 
get on board. But not yet. We, not yet. But we, we would like to. We've always talked about it. Hi. Hi. Wow. Okay. Uh, this, uh, it's a question for Mark. Uh, so in the later season, uh, Zach Morris and Lisa Turtle have kind of a budding romance, but it's never really explained why they broke up or for, they just decided to stop. Um, and I was wondering if you had like a behind the scenes explanation or like a personal explanation of why they broke up and Did what they? they would do if they stayed together, like what kind of relationship it would be. Yeah, what kind of character work did you do? What, what, what's your head canon? Oh my God. That? I'm like, that, I don't remember. That, she, she remembers that, but you didn't even like bring up the big elephant in the room. That, like, where, where did Tori come from? Where did Elizabeth's character go? Where did Jesse and Kelly go? And then Tori with a leather jacket comes in. It was like, what is this about? Like, those are like, and we just accept it. Like, we right. just accepted that. I had no... I, no narrative. But, but Lisa, like, Lisa and Zach were there from the beginning, so I felt like they needed a little bit more closure. And Tori just... She has a, motor, she has a motorcycle jacket. And she came out in a motorcycle, so was, came from the Wild West. We don't know. <laughs> she just does whatever she wants. It's How fine. about the fact the show started in Indiana, and then it came <laughs> out to Pacific Palisades? Like, nobody questioned that. Yeah. The, the multiverse of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> it was in Indiana? Uh, Miss Bliss. Miss Bliss oh, okay. was in Indiana. And then all of a sudden it's in the Palisades. Like, there's so many, there are so many of those. But the, the, to answer your question about the Lisa Turtle, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we dated for a little bit on the show, right? We had yeah. our moments. And then there was Kelly. I mean, it was kind of... Yeah. It was just, yeah. How did, how did A.C. Slater I forget that? I don't remember. I, I like that. He doesn't even remember. I don't even remember. The Lisa, fact that really? I dated I didn't know that. I like, Lisa Turtle. I'm like, I did? Did you? I, I don't know. I really don't. I, I, I swear to God. Three episodes we dated? Wow. Oh, Season man. four. I would do awful in trivia. I really, uh, I don't remember. We all, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I, yeah, no. you're, you're talking your way into another Fallon sketch. Yeah. Having the cast of yeah. Saved by the Bell do terrible at Saved by the Bell trivia. Yeah, right? right. I have no idea why that would have happened, but it, it, it is a question for the writers. I mean, yeah. I, I, you kind of run out of real estate, you know? It's like, we're, we're in this uh, environment for so long, and there's only so many people and relationships that you can kind of <laughs> recycle. <Combinations>. <laughs> so I, I guess that might have been the reason why. Well, on, on that note, are there any of those weird left turns that they took with the writing that you do remember that struck you as odd uh, or a particular episode that was just completely out of left no, field? No, I mean, I look at it now and I go, Zach Morris was Native American Indian. I mean, I was like, what? <laughs> you were? Dude, I had a there headdress was a whole, on. There was a whole episode. Totally remember, I had a whole episode. I don't remember this. I, somebody no. told me, like, how dare you? And so I said, yeah. Inappropriate, I, I, yeah. It's so inappropriate. Oh, and I was like, yeah, I you're right. That. But I had a like he didn't he didn't write I, it, folks. I didn't write it. Um, but yeah, I had like a headdress on. I guess I got out of like some. That's I, funny. W why did I put do it? Why I don't remember do it? that. Running Zach. Oh, running right. Zach. Oh, okay. I oh. vaguely remember. Even that. the title of the episode is problematic. Quite oh, I do remember one I'm thing. I'm 22, by the way. I You're love 22? it. 22. Wow. Is, I didn't watch this on TV. God bless you. It's uh, Zach <laughs> Morris is a lesbian fashion icon, and that's why I watch the show. I've always thought that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. That's funny. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. <laughs> Next up. Hi there. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for teaching me how to be cool in high school. That's my reference point. Uh, my question is, uh, the show touched on a lot of important issues like race and drugs and caffeine pills. Right. Uh, I wanted to know what kind of obligation you felt to be role models for the young people who are watching the show. I don't think, to be honest, it touched on relevant issues that were prevalent with teenagers at the time because we were a Saturday morning show and I remember they were hypersensitive about getting... How deep? Yeah, how deep they would get. For example, I do remember this. I had a pet chameleon, right, that died. Already. It was supposed to be a puppy, but they thought the puppy would be too um, sad and do downtrodden for kids if it died. So they made it a chameleon. Like, nobody's gonna feel sorry for a chameleon. <laughs> but I, that was a re I don't know why, but I vividly remember that. And I go, God, a puppy would have been much more, more real, right? Who cares about a chameleon? With all due respect to chameleon lovers. <laughs> but like little stuff like that, so it was, and the caffeine pills, yeah. you know, couldn't have been Coke, right? <laughs> or crystal meth. 
which is much more relevant and practical. I never even heard of caffeine pills before we did the show. Same, same. So it was, no it, it was sort of very, you know, was again, it, it, it was Saturday morning, so very little kids. Um, it was, there was some like Archie and the Riverdale gang stuff from the 50s transplanted into yeah, the 80s. that's a good transplant. Oh, I just noticed our girl over there. How you doing? All right. It's here for our sign language interpreters. <laughs> In sign language. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I have a question. Everybody, this is Michelle. <laughs> Say hi to Michelle. Hi. Oh, you know Michelle? She, I, we met earlier. Okay. I remembered her name. <laughs> um, what was your favorite episode of the film? The favorite episode of the film? I mean, I, I think we all get asked that a lot. You said favorite episode, right? I, for me, I, any time we got to get out of the classroom was a lot of fun. When we were at the beach, or we went to Palm Springs, or we got to go to Hawaii for uh, um, it was a movie, you know, for a movie. That was a lot of that was a lot of fun. I think any time we got to do that, I think was was the most fun for me. Yeah, same here. Same Th here. Those were fun, and I also thought our fantasy sequences were just fun because they were so silly and ridiculous, <laughs> and whatever yeah. wigs and costumes, and it was just fun. Thank you. How was it? How was it filming the the Vegas movie? Oh yeah, we went to Vegas too. <laughs> you know what I remember about the Vegas movie? This is, this, I remember OJ. like random things. We stopped and watched the OJ chase. That's right. Nineteen ninety four. Nineteen ninety four. Literally we stopped Remember? production, yeah, we stopped sat production in a hotel room and watched Just like the rest of America. You guys were doing that Vegas movie while I was doing another Vegas movie. Oh, that's right. Was oh, that right? You were weren't in the Vegas the thing? Time? No. Oh, wow. I feel left oh, out. So we don't even remember that. <laughs> I feel left out. That's what I remember about the Vegas movie. <laughs> I know. OJ. I know. <laughs> white, the white Bronco. Thank you. <laughs> Next up. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thanks. Welcome to Toronto. Thanks for building my childhood. Um, I had a question actually. Well, I was gonna ask, ask you, uh, Mario Lopez, about the Uriah Faber fights, but I'll ask something for everybody else too. Um, in the college years, there's one episode about being Chicano, and you know, in Toronto, we're a diverse city. It's hard to identify, you know, with certain people. We have a mosaic here that's built in Canada. So I always identified with you. I'm not Chicano. I'm actually Asian. <laughs> and then I found out that. You're part Asian, Mark Paul. Then I was like fighting in the schoolyards because it was a predominantly Ecuadorian neighborhood. Like, oh no, Mark's Asian too. So they're all diverse, you know? <laughs> I heard Elizabeth, you're Jewish, and then I heard Lark Voorhees was supposed to be a Jewish character. But I want to ask actually, um, <laughs> did you have any influence on that Chicano episode? Because that actually was really, you know, if you guys didn't touch around such deep issues, that actually, for a teenager watching that, was actually really important. Yeah, no, it's funny because what I remember that is uh, your line was funny when you said, I thought we thought he was Italian. I remember that. The, the episode what, what, where we realized your last name was actually Sanchez. Yeah. No, is that? No, yeah, did it? AC Sanchez, it? yeah. Is oh, that your way? dad changed his name? I remember oh, being damn, Latino. I remember yeah, man. I just I remember, remember that funny line. really clearly. <laughs> was, oh, okay. I didn't know. That's good. I'm going to remember that. Um, <laughs> no, I had no influence on that, to be honest. But what I kind of liked about being cast as as Slaters, they weren't necessarily looking for like a Latin guy to play the role. Um, Robin Lippin, who was the casting director, uh, cast blindly for that, which I thought was really cool, which I thought is the way it should be. Should be people that look like you and me be able to play roles just telling universal stories with universal themes. That's the way it should be. You don't have to hit someone over the head with a tortilla to get the, <laughs> to get the point across. It should just be everyday people from very diverse backgrounds in a very inclusive community that you can tell universal themes. So that's the one thing I kind of liked about it. They decided to throw that in in the college years, maybe because you're supposed to be woke when you're in college, but that was not me, <laughs> to be honest. That was in, that was in college years? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask one more question. The other question I want to ask is, you know when they made that made-for-TV horrible doc movie about you guys, how much of it was False. Like, it just, oh, how much of it was true? Do you guys I, even pay any attention to I that kind of stuff? I didn't see it. The ones they do it, the ones they do it on uh, the Lifetime ones? Yeah, because yeah, they had you doing push-ups like before every scene. Oh, that Mario was true. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mark Paul, you had a tiger mom. A tiger I, that was Asian totally mom. true. Yeah, no. And then what, what Elizabeth, you had a... Uh, you were like <laughs> the, the mom mean, of the group. You are always like putting out fires and all that. What do you mean? Like there was always... 
Apparently, again, oh, okay. this is a whole... No, just fun to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently in yeah. the, the show, um, <laughs> like, the uh, Lark, Verries, and uh, uh, Kelly Kapowski were always fighting over Mark, so then you're always kind of like putting out those fires. Huh. Mark would always do push-ups, and then... Uh, sorry, Mario would always do push-ups and scenes, that and then Dustin would do it. Too. Everybody's doing a lot of push-ups. Hey guys, I, for, I can yeah. wrap. I can wrap this up with uh, with a sentence. That movie was based on Dustin Diamond's book. Which is fiction. Which fiction? Oh, was it? Yeah, well, I think so. A lot of it. Of the a lot of it was taken from his book. The, they use it as like so the, uh, fiction, uh, oh, yeah, the template oh, based on. There's there's a reason that things like that are marked as unauthorized because they don't actually go to you guys to get your first person accounts. They did a lot of those though, right? They yeah. did a lot for a lot of other shows. But it's really like, weird. Like movies. we're we're used to reading scripts where you play characters and you know like for instance Zach and Slate or whatever. Um, but you, when I I read like the first quarter of that script and it was. Mario, Mark Paul, Elizabeth. It was really weird to see my name right. on a script uh, and, and reading what supposedly what came out of my mouth. But, you know, it was, it, was, it was, I guess, fun for people to watch, but I wouldn't yeah. put too much stock Alternate in that. universe fan fiction. Yes. <laughs> Next up. Hey, everyone. I'm Jonathan. Hi. Jonathan. Hi. Sorry, I'm just a little nervous. <laughs> okay, Dude, um, I'm on stage with him. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Okay, my question is actually for uh, Mario Lopez. It's about your character, A.C. Slater. So we always saw him as the big, tough muscle guy, like the, the football player, the um, wrestler. But why did his character feel that he always had to like, protect the nerds? Like he, used, he could have used his ability to be like a complete like, bully, right? But he always, we'd always see him like, protecting Screech. And even, even though he'd like, joke around and bully the nerds, he'd like, always have their back at the end of the day, right? So oh, why did his character feel like... I think he's a nice guy. <laughs> I think he's a nice guy. You know, they, didn't want, they didn't want him to be a complete a-hole. Yeah. And, and you know, know what's funny is I was always nice to Screech in real life. Yes. I think I was the only one that was really he nice. He was. Oh, I, I was gotta nice. say, I was always put minute. up with a lot. I, I was did. really nice was, to him. Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. I was the other one. I can say really I was nice not very too. nice. You were, you were, you were. But you were, you were no, no time for it. He would come to me with problems, and I would talk to him. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I was, and the thing with I always Dustin, feel, I always feel sorry. I always the feel thing bad. with Dustin too is that we were all uh, three years older than him. So at at that point in your life, that's a big gap. Like yeah. three years now, you know, if you're thirty 15. or thirty five or whatever, that's not a big gap. But when you're fifteen and someone's twelve. Oh, yeah. That's a huge thing. So he was always ostracized. He was always in the, in, you know, kind of trying to follow what yeah. we were doing. And, you know, as teenagers, you're like, hey. Um, but that's, that's probably why a lot of that happened. But you were a nice guy. You were, yeah, you were, I was you always were a good nice. guy. Poor Dustin. Awesome. Oh, Thank nice. you guys so much. <laughs> Thanks. We got about five minutes left. I think we can get through a few more of you if we go yeah, quick. Hi. Um, thanks again for being here. Um, one of my favorite gags on Saved by the Bell was when uh, something bad would happen and then Zach would say, oh, time out, and then everything would freeze. Um, what were some of your favorite gags on the show? I mean, that was, a fun, that was always a fun moment because that was sort of like a Ferris Bueller sort of uh, moment. You know what was funny to me, dude? Because it was on the other day and I just stopped. Because I forgot we had a band, too, remember? <laughs> <laughs> we would sing in the band. We had the, the, we had the band. That was I funny. hurt my the knee, so I wasn't in that episode. What was it called? The Zack Attack. Zach Zach Attack. I remember that. <laughs> Little things are coming back to me. <laughs> but you actually played the drums. Yeah. I didn't play the guitar at that point. <laughs> so I watch it, I'm like, I'm strumming. On TV, we were jamming, Not, though. Like, you, you would think they would like, have taught us maybe three chords, right? Because you can make a song out of three chords. <laughs> No one taught us anything. Right. It's like, just take this guitar and act like you can sing. And, I forgot we had and, a band. Yeah, that, was, that was tight. It was fun whenever <laughs> we had to learn tight. dance routines, powerhouse preppies, or we were dressed up like Cleopatra and, you know, remember like yeah, the dance? Yeah, I actually like, remember Whenever that. we had performance things, uh, you know that song, put your mind to it, go for it. I mean, we had a blast learning those. The girls. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the um, hot Sunday. Dang. Their new album drops she would, next week. She would totally win the trivia. She would totally win. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really nervous. Uh, oh, nice you, jacket, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. That. I had to do something because I'm dressing up like Kelly tomorrow, but I wanted to wear something for the What's piano. your name? Allie. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's do the Bayside chant for Allie. Beep, 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 beep. beep, beep. beep. It goes, beep, 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 beep. beep, beep, beep. beep. 
Beep, 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 go Bayside. Okay, you ready? You ready? All right, let's do it. Elizabeth, you lead us. You ready? One, two, three. Beep, 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 go Bayside. See, now Allie's not nervous. Okay, thank you. All right. So, this has kind of been brought up, but you focused on a lot of, I think the show had a really good mixture of funny and silly bits and also those really good lessons like the drunk driving and the caffeine pills that have already been mentioned. Is there anything that you wish there would have been an episode to focus on? Some issue or just some storyline that you wish you could have tackled? Well, I mean, I think there was a lot that, that we could have, but like I explained earlier, I think we were very aware of our young audience, it being uh, Saturday morning, so we were sort of limited. And then the executive producer who was our showrunner, a guy named Peter Engel, was a very strong um, born-again Christian at the time. So we weren't even allowed to cuss, and we weren't, he was very cognizant of the audience and who uh, he was, and he, that was, I think, a big influence on the show. But I think that's part of the innocence that made it sort of charming and maybe resonated so because it, it was a big escapism because it was not many high schools, unfortunately, that were as idyllic as probably that and as clean and as nice. And so it's, cause it's sort of kind of escaped like, oh, you know, that's a nice little fantasy world to kind of go check out. Thank you so much. You got Thank it. You. you had mentioned that it was pretty much season to season. Was there a point that the college years was planned, or was that just another season to season thing? I think it was another season to season. We had said goodbye after we graduated on Saved by the Bell, and then I was going back to school. I was like, I was, I wasn't really sure if I was going to become an actor or stay, continue being an actor. And then we got called to do that primetime show, and that was like a whole another entity of of Saved by the Bell because. You know, we did Saturday morning, and then College Years was on prime time. So, yeah, that was another one where they, there was another cast, and some of us went to that school. What was it called? Um, was it California University or something like that? Was it? I think it was some, who was in it? Like, you, you and I were in it. Who else was in it? Was, was, was uh, it Tiffany was in it. Was she? Tiffany was in it. She was in it. She was in it, I think, like, season two or something, right? No, it's only one season. Or, only one season. Was later, Tiffany she, I think she showed up what? later in the she, first season. She was in it. Right away? We, she died? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, she was there. And then... Oh. <laughs> huh. When, when did we was, get married? Was Screech in it? When did we get married? You got yeah, married Screech was in it. I know. So prior to that? Oh, prior, prior to, to college? Prior to college? Oh, yeah. Did Trying to remember your college years is a real, it's a real thing. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, no, no. Would you get married after college? Talking, I don't know. Did we do the That's wedding after question. college years? The wedding was no? after college years, right? The wedding was after college It was after college years. The wedding it was, during. was, it Vegas was after college. Right? Is that what you're all saying? Can someone Google it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, whatever happened to Dennis, he was, he yeah. Oh, no, we know that. Yeah, we know yeah. that. We just didn't know. We didn't know the timeline. Huh? Sorry. Go ahead. You have a question. Let's see. Like, if you get the college years on DVD, it's the last two episodes. The, 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 the wedding? The, the wedding. Vegas. Oh, okay. Oh, okay so cool. you did get married after. Because that would have been weird. You got married and then we went to college and then you're picking up on other chicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally inappropriate. <laughs> That'd be very, it'd be very inappropriate, but also very Zach Morris. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I think Hi, we got guys. time for this last one. Okay, perfect. Um, so you guys were all iconic characters. What was your favorite thing about your character? Like, what, do you, what did you love about your own character that you played? I mean, you know what's funny is when we um, first got to do the show, I think they had us write down a bunch of different stuff that we were interested in, hobbies and what have you. So, you know, my mom put me in a bunch of classes. I remember that, because that's, yeah, because that's why, that's why I was wrestling and drums and all this stuff, because that wasn't in the character. My character was supposed to be a little bit more like Vinnie Barbarino, I think, and, mm -hmm. and just kind of a little more of a street kid. But then they incorporated that into the character. So people think, oh, you really wrestled in real life? I was like, well, yeah, I was a, the character didn't, they, he did it after me, after that. So they, I kind of like that they incorporated all that into the character, which was kind of cool. So I guess, as far as the favorite. Nice. Pirouette now, please. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I always love Jesse's passion for people and causes and, yeah. 
that. Bless you. That's what I loved about her. Did you like Zach's time stopping ability? I mean, what what was it about Zach that you liked? The no, most that was actually home? hard to do because we opened up the show and, with that. And, and then they uh, stopped it right after se- a season two. Or I don't know. Right? You're asking the wrong guy. Okay. <laughs> 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 he, lo- he lost his superpowers at no, some point. He also lost his memory. I don't know. That didn't but happen were... anymore. Or my... No, he kept doing it. He... But that was that was show? hard because I, I remember the really very was... first episode. I had to do that and having to talk to the audience. That was not it. easy, as a 13 year old. It was, and then having us like goofing around, and then I'd have to you know t- time out and you'd hear him snickering in the back or something like that. <laughs> You know, it's a, it was it, w- it wasn't easy, but oh yeah, because we had to hold. Oh yeah, you got ha- you would have to hold an awkward position, the and the more yeah, awkward, right. the more funny it was, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it, I don't know. But working on that show in front of a live audience, that was kind of fun, and uh, we we played off the audience, and um, yeah, yeah, was that was fun. Time. It was like doing a play. Yeah, it was like doing a play every week. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple little things. We've got a lot more great programming happening in this room and other rooms. Take a look at the app. Uh, the three of you are here the rest of the weekend, yes? You're here yes. through tomorrow? Today uh, and tomorrow. If you have not gone to see them at their tables yet, uh, they'll be back at their tables. Uh, I'm not sure when photo ops are, that kind of thing. I know. But, but I they'll... know, the photo op. The oh, yeah, I don't know when that is. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, again, it's all in the app. That's why they have the app, because my brain falls apart at times like this. Uh, the, the last thing that I wanted to ask, because every time we do one of these, we have more people in line than we could get to in three three hours, um, but something that, that I find, there's always a different answer to it. When you have these fans coming up to your tables and talking about difficult things they went through in their life, things that watching Saved by the Bell got them through, things that it helped them in their development when they were adolescents, w- what has it been like getting these stories from fans? You've only been doing these conventions for, for a little bit now. What, what has that experience been like for you? Did you, did you have a, a really uh, touching moment the first time you did one of these conventions that, that really opened your eyes as to what this experience is for them? Well, I think any time anyone comes up to you and tells you that they appreciate what you did or it touched them in a certain way, I mean, it's extremely flattering and, and you feel really good about it and you can't help but uh, sort of appreciate that they took the time to say that. And it makes you feel good. There's no other way you know, around it, really. Yeah, there's not too, uh, too many opportunities except when you're on the street and you're probably, you know, or at a dinner or something where you, where you probably don't want to be approached. But it is nice in this environment to be approached by people that follow your work or follow a specific um, project that you've done and, you know, you can have a discussion. It is a, it is a really cool format to be able to have that because we don't get to do that very often in our day-to-day life. Um, but to meet people who, you know, enjoy your work is, is, a, is a great experience. Well, can we get another round of applause for the cast of Saved by the Bell? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.